against Paulie Malinaji. Now, this fight hasn't been confirmed yet. I read an article on BadLeftHook.com. Shout out to them. Uh, Michael Woods. And um, I follow all of the, the writers from that site on uh, Twitter. They uh, made an article saying that Danny Garcia already has a date set in August, okay? And it's most likely going to be against Paulie Malinaji, all right? Which makes sense. You know, Paulie does have a fight coming up. He's been hinting he has a fight coming up. He's going to put out the information soon. I don't know if the fight has been confirmed because this article is a few days old. But um, the fight makes sense. You know, I've been um, I've said before, even on my channel, that the fight would be a good fight. Um, it makes sense for Danny Garcia. It's a good test, test for Danny Garcia. Garcia. I said this in the past, all right? So it makes sense. You know, they've entertained it before. They said in interviews before that they would both do the fight. And it would make sense for them to fight in Brooklyn, right? So that ends all the speculation on whether or not Floyd is going to pick Danny Swift Garcia. If you follow me on YouTube, um, not on YouTube, but on Twitter, we had a discussion uh, about that a few days ago um, where I was talking Mayweather and Danny Garcia. And I'm going to elaborate on that real quick before I, I talk about Paulie Malinaji. Um, the, the way I feel about the Mayweather fight is Danny Garcia... And a Mayweather fight, it, it has all the ingredients for it to make sense, you know, to sell sell decent and stuff like that. Um, Danny Garcia has everything that a typical Floyd Mayweather opponent would have, okay? He's a champion. Um, he's undefeated. He's a Latino fighter. He's young. Um, he's popular. You know what I'm saying? He does have a huge fan base. So it makes sense for Floyd to fight him, Okay. Um, now that he has a date set for August, we know that Danny Garcia won't be fighting Floyd Mayweather. But before this, you know, a lot of people thought that Floyd might have fought him. And the reason why I didn't, I don't like the fight is because stylistically, even though Danny is all of those things I just mentioned, I don't think he has a shot against Floyd. I think Floyd's style is terrible for Danny Garcia. And I don't even think Danny Garcia would win one round against Floyd Mayweather, okay? Um... You know, I mean, I'm not going to give a whole breakdown of that because the fight is not going to happen now. But um, this, this, just based off distance alone and, and Floyd's long reach, there wouldn't be many opportunities for Danny to hit Floyd. You've seen him in Lamont Peterson fight. You've seen him in Mauricio Herrera fight. That Danny, you can stabilize Danny just with a good jag, it's staying active and keeping distance. You can You can do it, you know. Um, Lamont Peterson was doing it at some points. Uh, same thing with Mauricio Herrera, even though they were both switching up, being on the inside, being on the outside. Um, you know, he was. they were doing it from far. Danny is a good mid-range fighter. And Floyd wouldn't really have to be on the inside. He could stay on the far out because Danny has short arms. I just think stylistically it's a bad matchup. I know it has the ingredients to be a good fight, you know. But um, stylistically, I think that's a bad fight for Danny. Now, let's let's talk about Paulie Malinaji. Now, like I said, the fight is not a bad fight. Um, I'm not giving a prediction or anything because I want to see if the fight gets announced first. And when the fight gets announced, then I'll do a real prediction video, right? But this is the thing, I, my initial thoughts on this fight. This is supposed to be Danny's first fight at 147, okay? And we already know he's been fighting at the catch weight of 143 lately. He hasn't defended his titles. And most likely... Um, he's going to have to vacate his title suit because he's going too many fights without defending his titles at 140, right? Um, uh, if he fights Danny Garcia, he move up to 147. The problem I have, this is the only problem I have with it, right? All right. The thing is, I see that it's starting to become, for people, people want to move up to 147 and fight Paulie Malinaji. Paulie Malinaji is a good boxer, but a good test at 147, you're not really getting an idea of the power advantages that the fighters at 147 have over the guys at 140. 
Paulie Malinaji is not a big puncher, okay? He was never a big puncher, okay? At 140, 147, he's just not knocking guys out. He never was like that, okay? I don't remember the last time he stopped somebody. But um, you're not really getting tested at 147 when you're coming into the to, to the, the division fighting Paulie Malinaji. Um, even though is you're going to have a hard time outboxing him and winning the fight, you're not getting a test when it comes to power. You know, you're not fighting a true welterweight. Um, Paulie's been fighting there for a little bit now, but he's not really one of those guys like Adrian Broner was able to go up to 147 and beat Paulie in a split decision. Paulie was definitely more active in the fight. You know, he definitely had a volume advantage against Broner, but Broner just kept walking through, walking through Paulie, you know, because Paulie just didn't have the power to get games Adrian Broner's respect. Adrian Broner just kept walking forward and walking Paulie down because Paulie just doesn't have the power. And even for a guy like Broner, who moved up from lightweight to go to 147 and fight, fight Paulie and not be affected by any of the flush shots that Paulie was landing in that fight, it just goes to show you that at welterweight, it's like it's a meaningless fight if you're just moving up to the weight. To feel it out, you know, to, to the division, to feel out the division, you know, because Paulie is just doesn't have the punching power. So when Broner goes up to fight Mila Nagy and then fights Marcos Maidana, which is the complete opposite, you know, where now you're fighting a big puncher at welterweight, you know. I mean, even though Maidana hasn't been at welterweight for that long, he's always been a big puncher. So if you're a big puncher at 140, most likely, your KO ratio is like almost damn near 100% from everybody that you beat. You go up to 147, most likely your chances are you're still going to have a lot of power. And this is why Broner was getting knocked around in that fight. He got dropped. That's the first time we seen him down. Because Maidana has a lot of power. You know, he has big power. And, um... You know, I feel like Danny Garcia going up in the weight to fight somebody at welterweight. I think he should be fighting someone that, yeah, maybe not a Keith Thurman, okay? I'm not saying he has to fight him or Marcos Maidana. But you should be at least be fighting like maybe an Andre Berto, a guy that's been at the division, uh, Sean Porter. Uh, maybe not even Sean Porter because Sean Porter is like one of the elite fighters at the division. But maybe like an Andre Berto, uh, Jesus Soto Carras. You know, um, there's a few guys I can name. I can't think of. I mean, even as, even like a Devin Alexander, you know. Um, you know, you should be fighting one of those guys at 147 to fill out. Since you're the lineal champ at 140, you have a great resume. You know, Danny Garcia has a great resume at 140. You know, I don't think he won some of those fights. Um, well, against Mauricio Herrera. But you should at least be fighting someone that has some kind of power because you want to get a feel of the, the division if you go and fight Paulie Malinaji and beat him if you beat Paulie and fight like a Thurman next or you know or a bigger puncher at the division next you're not really getting a test at that division you're getting tested by a guy that may outbox you but as far as you moving up in weight. You're not really getting a test when it comes to punching power, okay? So I just seen this pattern going on with fighters that want to move up to 147. All right, let's take a let's take Paulie Malinaji because Paulie is the softest touching boxer at 147. You know that's no disrespect to Paulie. It's just real facts. Like everybody wants people that want to fight you is it's because they. They know there's not a chance of you knocking them out. Yeah, you might outbox them, but you're not going to knock them out. You know what I'm saying? And that's why people like taking this fight because it's a good name. Paulie has a great, you know, he has, he has a lot of experience. He's been in there with many, many fighters, many top fighters. In there, and he lost a majority of those fights. You know, um, this is why people want to go up and fight him first. But it's not really true test at one at 147. Why don't you fight someone with a little bit more power? You know, uh, I mean, at, at 147, you know, especially when you're the champion of, in the division, you already can't make weight. You're pretty much fighting as a welterweight already 
and I'm I'm speaking as uh, uh, on Danny Garcia. You're already fighting as a welterweight. Why don't you fight a guy that can hurt you? You know, you know, Paulie could win the fight based on volume and activity, and outbox him, Danny Garcia. But is Danny Garcia ever gonna respect Paulie's power? No, Danny's gonna keep coming forward because Paulie has lost by many fighters because just because they were just more aggressive. You know, I mean, he's been out boxed too, but, you know, he's lost because the fighters that he fought were more aggressive and they brought the fight to him. And his punch of power, they just, they didn't respect his punch of power. He didn't have the power to keep the guys off of them. Okay. So that's how I feel about the fight. I'm not mad at the fight. It's just that I know the purpose of this fight. We're fighting, we're moving up. We want to test at 147. It's a test in a sense that he's fighting a good boxer, but it's not a test when it comes to when we're talking about he's moving to a different division. He's fighting bigger guys, you know, and then plus this is the most um, competitive division in boxing today. All right. And it has been quite for some time now. You're moving up and you're fighting. Your test is a guy that doesn't punch that hard. So you're fighting a guy that, probably punches as hard as a lightweight um and opposed to a guy at a welterweight division you know you know a, a respectable power like Kell Brook I wouldn't say he's the biggest puncher I wouldn't say he hits harder than Maidana or a Keith Thurman but he has respectable power at the division you know he has he could knock you out you know I mean he has been knocking guys out um you know Sean Porter not the biggest puncher, but he has enough to knock you out. He stopped Paulie Malignaggi, you know. Uh, Berto, even back in his day, he was knocking guys out. You know, he does have power. He did stop Josecito Lopez in that fight. Even a Guerrero, you know. Guerrero didn't look great in his last fight. But even him, he has respectable power. Where he hits you, you know, you're not going to just keep walking through it. You know, you don't want to get hit by the guy. You know, you want to get hit by Paulie neither, but it's a difference. You know, Broner fighting up at the weight, he just kept walking forward. He had no respect for Paulie Malignaggi's power, okay? And that's why he won the fight, because he was able to walk through Paulie. Um, even though Paulie was landing shots, it didn't phase him. He just kept coming forward, all right, and walking him down, all right? So that's how I feel about the fight. It is a good fight, but I just broke it down to you why. Um, it's not really a good test when you're moving up because you're not really fighting a bigger fighter with bigger punches here. You're still fighting someone that was just in the same division as you. And even when he was in that division, he wasn't knocking guys out. So that's how I feel initially on the fight. If they announce the fight, excuse me, I'm sure it'll be in Brooklyn. I forgot the date. It's going to be in August, though. Should be a good fight to go to Brooklyn and watch. Um, you know, I think, uh, Paulie definitely has a shot at beating, uh, Danny Garcia. Um, at this point, I think someone has to clearly beat Danny. Um, even though I think Mauricio Herrera did that, um, I think someone would have to destroy him in order to win a, de a, de a decision against Danny Garcia. Um, I don't know if Paulie is going to be able to do that, you know, because, you know, even though he's a good fighter, he doesn't have that power to really keep Danny off him. Um, but that I'll break that fight down more when they announce it, all right? Make sure you subscribe. Got more videos on the way. Peace.